Ben, I've got a question from an audience member. They're wondering um, what the impact of quantum computing might actually have on digital ID, especially the nation that that reaches quantum computing supremacy on all of this stuff. You know, does that you know to what extent will that impact cracking these things quickly? Well, if you look at uh, when they created, if you look at the encryption algorithms back in. I think it was the 70s, they created DES encryption. That was one of the first encryption algorithms. The NSA had a big part in that. And at the time, they, uh, they, were, they, were, they were charged with creating a certain section of the algorithm. Uh, I believe it was the boxes. And at the time, all the, ner all the nerds were saying, they're going to write back doors into the algorithm. It's going to happen. Modern computers today, they can look at it in more d in depth into the algorithm. And they see that the NSA actually hardened the boxes and made it more difficult to crack. So... The replacement for that was in 90, a competition for that was held in the mid, the early 90s. And in 96, they chose um, AES encryption, which is what's pretty much used today for everything. Everyone's sort of seen AES uh, in types of encryption that they've used. So that's advanced encryption standard. That's the particular algorithm that won the competition and become the new standard. They've actually started a new process to, to create a replacement for AES. And that is go, the, one of the requirements for that is going to be, it has to be quantum computer resistant. So it has to be resistant to being cracked by a quantum computer because when you look at what a quantum computer can do, if you took a password that would take, with a modern supercomputer, a thousand years to break. So that means it is having millions of attempts per second at guessing the password, essentially. That process would take a thousand years doing that continuously to break the password, to, to go through every possible combination of that password. A quantum computer could do it in a second. So that gives you an example of what quantum computers are going to lead to in terms of this, um, this race for supremacy in cyberspace. Because if you've got a, a quantum computer that can do that and a government that possesses that uh, technology, they're going, to then they're going to tie that with AI. Imagine what a quantum computer mm. AI learning model could do. Master key. You know? Master key. It could do it could do things that that human beings can't even can't even uh, comprehend. But it's gonna it's not it's not a doomsday uh, scenario because if you look at it, there, there is a lot of positivities that are going to come out of it. We're going to see revolutionary technology. We're going to see things change for the whole world for the better. It's not just going to be all negative. But the question is going to come with breaking algorithms and all these different things what's going to happen to the old encryption desk encryption was in the 70s modern computer a modern computer today look mobile phones today in fact are more powerful than some of the supercomputers they used to have so they that, that that's how that's how old desk encryption is and that still hasn't been fully broken they've broken like a tiny few sections of it but overall it's still there so mm. quantum computers are going to change a lot but ultimately i think that um if you have a quantum computer moving forward and that's going to create algorithms and create um, encryption. There's going to be ones that are trying to break it. It's going to be a, just like computers now, just more, far more advanced. But in, the, in relation to the question, what is going to happen to a nation who gets the supremacy in that? Well, they're going to be able to do things at a far higher level than the rest of the world. Right. But that in itself means that other nations are going to follow. It'll be almost like an arms race. Nuclear arms race, yeah. 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 And, and you know what you said earlier, I, I think is basically true. And this is something no one wants to hear. But I, I don't think this is avoidable. I think when we discover more efficient ways of living that makes life easier, we always go for it. Um, regardless of what the cost is. If, if the efficiency and the pay is far more obvious and immediate than any costs, which may be more long-term and more subtle, we will always go for that which pays straight away. And so, you know, as Natalie was saying, I do think we're heading into something, uh, a, a very, very interesting age, and no one quite knows what it's going to look like. Um, but also, as you said, um, let, let's remember, you know, a lot of good... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not advocating for all of this, but it always happens that a lot of good things come from these kinds of things as well. Life for many people, maybe for all of us, will get easier, uh, but there is always a cost. I think, for example, of the Industrial Revolution, no one really wants to go back to pre-industrial times. I mean, you've got, you've got some who would, and we, every now and then I, 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 I watch Facebook videos of a guy who built a log cabin in Alaska back in the 1960s and 70s, and I think, wow, wouldn't that be fantastic? Um, but at the end of the day, no one really wants to go back to pre-industrial times, even though the 
the transition from pre-industrial times to industrial times was very, very traumatic, and you know uh, th there was a lot of loss. Um, you know, we are all caught up in historical forces, and one of those forces is just is the march of technology. Mm. And if it's going to go backwards, it will be because it kind of self-destructs. And that might be one one of the things that that we're heading into. Mm. One of the one, one of the big worries about this is this, Australia's on the cutting edge of this technology right now with regards to not the um, AI and supercomputer stuff we're behind, more more the digital ID stuff because they're, they're not rolling really this out in in many places in the West right now, but they want to. Australia's one of the first, which means coming up with solutions to this is actually kind of on our community to work it out. We often have the benefit of being a lucky country and late to certain things like censorship. But it, this one is going to be where we're, we're going to be a bit of a testing ground, like with, with many other things, and um, including the hacking, including the hacking, yeah. including. The